Hello everyone, this is Clausius, and we are back with game number two of the Goat Congress 2022. As I talked about last time, I had a very poor mindset, and I'd started with a loss. I'm down to three Don. I'm feeling very bummed, but I'm like, it's okay, we'll just go into this next game and just do our best, play solid, don't underestimate your opponent. Don't overthink it. And then I woke up in the morning to realize my opponent was actually Nick Sibiki. So for those of you who don't know, Nick is a YouTuber and he's also quite strong. <laughs> I was very surprised to find him at three dawn. And in the game, when we when we get to the table, I actually asked him, I, I was like, why are you three dawn? And his response to me was, I performed very poorly in my last tournament, so I decided to just keep the rank and then just fix it here at Go Congress. Two, what have been Fordons in past tournaments, both of us have been Fordons in tournaments, are now facing off at three Don. So I'm like, this is not an opponent that is normally a three Don. This is not an opponent I can just have a good percentage to beat i'm actually it's actually gonna be quite difficult to win and i'm at three dots so there, i feel there, i had a lot of mental pressure and like if i lose this game i'm gonna go all the way down to two dot but it's not like i can just beat nick Sibiki very easily like he's a very strong player so i was actually in in my head i was like maybe he's really out of practice i really hope he's out of practice because uh i heard that uh he had been focusing on other things in life so i'm like maybe he's out of practice maybe that's why he's on a losing streak maybe that's why he's three dot I was wrong. <laughs> um, quite quickly, I figured out he was very much in practice. If anything, I was the one out of practice because I'd only been preparing for Go Congress for about two months before the event. And for like eight months before that, I had only been teaching and not really studying because I, I've uh, not been able to go to Go Club. There was no tournaments. I've not, I had not played Go in person in a very long time. I was very, very sad about it, which is also why I was so excited about Go Congress. With the exception of the Midwest Open, I did play in person at the Midwest Open. Basically from March until August, I had not played, I think, a single in-person Go game. Aside from with my wife and my brother, who are both like 10Q, 9Q, so I don't, I don't think that counts for me. But I had not played by friends, I had not gone to Go Club, and I was very excited about Go Congress. Realistically speaking, I was the one very much out of practice. So again, I'm going into this game, maybe, maybe Nick's out of practice, maybe I can do this. Uh, and that is not how it went. <laughs> okay, so in this game, I was black, and so now I get to apply my points level opening that I had been practicing. So here we actually get into a little bit of another bad habit that I unintentionally developed for this tournament. So in practice, I had been going here and here. And this one actually, uh, actually I've been uh, working a lot and sometimes even here, but you can see I've been working on much more active ideas. This one is the one, the, one of the points lever that you start with to learn it, but at my level, it's okay to play this one. And I think this one is the one that I actually want for this idea after doing some research um, and studying it because this one is the most territory oriented while also still not being super passive. So this one's a little bit slack. So it's not that it's a bad move, but it shows that I actually became, I act, I'm actually playing more timid moves than I did in practice because I'm like, okay, it's a tournament. Let's play the let's play the safer options instead of going for the complex options because I'm in a tournament. And that's like the opposite of what you want to do. You want to say, hey, I've studied this. Go for it. Not, hey, I know I studied the other one, but I'm scared of what might happen because this is such an important game. So I'm going to be a little bit passive. And so the mentality here shows that I am still just in a bad spot mentally because I think I had maybe over prepared for the tournament to the sense that I was really wanting to perform well so i was trying to play solid and safe and it was just creating some slow passive play so white went here and immediately my idea that uh, nick had been out of practice out of study kind of uh started uh floating away and disappearing and like oh crap he actually does know the new stuff <laughs> um so there went my hope that uh he was gonna be unprepared for uh I guess the modern strategies. And honestly, if I was thinking that, 
if I was thinking, hey, he hasn't, he probably hasn't studied the modern stuff, then I should just go here and use the modern stuff against him if I thought he was out of practice, if I thought that that was a possibility, because I have studied this, so I should be okay to play this. Uh, but I'm just playing so passive, and it just doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, I'm just following my points lever idea. And here Nick actually played a sequence that I didn't know you could do. So I know this one, and then here, here, here. This leads into, um, I forget the name, might be the flying knife, I'm not sure, but it leads into a really, really complex uh, Joseki pattern, or I should say patterns, that if you don't know it very well, you could easily die and a lot of bad things can happen. So I always go for this one, which forces this sequence. Now, Nick actually went here, which I believe is a minor mistake, but it also sets Black up to go back into, um, I think it's the flying knife. Uh, so it says black up, uh, black up to go back into that complex variation. So I really wanted to avoid that. So I went, uh, for this pattern because it still leaves cutting points on the outside and now I'm alive. So I'm perfectly fine. So I felt pretty happy with this and I just do this to leave the Aji here. I made a misunderstanding of an idea, but this is, this is not from just uh, thinking poorly. This is just mixing up ideas. So I actually played elsewhere, which I thought this was a very large move. Um, honestly, I should go here, though. This is more points levery. And then when my opponent goes here, I could just go in and deal with it. But I was trying to break my opponent's idea, my opponent's framework while also building mine. So I think it's an okay move locally. Uh, but I really need this exchange first. Now, the reason I didn't was because in this Joseki, we used to play this move all the time. But the AI said, hey, this is very good for white because of this tiger's mouth. Instead, you shouldn't play that. And if you really want to, you can exchange one more and then play elsewhere. And now there's peeps, there's invasion points. This tiger's mouth makes white a lot, e makes white's thickness a lot easier to deal with. So I thought I was applying that concept because I thought, don't give my opponent a tiger's mouth. But this is completely different because of this blackstone right here. There's actually a nice shape point right here to make uh, white very cramped and have low liberties. So it actually creates a lot of easy invasion points. So giving white this is actually very valuable. Um, so I uh, misapplied a concept there. Uh, and what makes it worse is that white can actually fix that in Sente. Now in the game, I thought, okay, he can have that in Sente because I Tuniki first. But white actually got much thicker here, so already like white's bottom side looks even better. Um, it's not perfect, but better than it could have been. All right, so white plays. I apply my points lever ideas, and then I immediately go in. I actually don't need to do this yet. I think this is a this is not what I had been playing up to this point. What I had been playing was, hey, I'm going to build a large framework um, because if it's equal, then build mine. This is more what this is typically more what I try to do. And then also my center can cancel out their center. And that's just a lot easier because I have the points to start working in the center now. Like I don't need to keep playing territory. Like I could go right here, but that's also very territorial. I already have plenty of territory. So I just deal with the center. So the way I normally think about it is I have territory, so let's just go stop my opponent's center. But in this case, making my center is also stopping my opponent's center. So it actually makes a lot of sense to do this. And this is normally what the, the type of positions that I go for is shoulder hits to build my framework. But instead, I'm focusing on my opponent. Just don't let them have their position because I'm up on territory. So just go in. And this isn't a terrible move. It's just not how I had been playing before this. Um, so for some reason, I was underperforming in the tournament when normally I do much, much better in the tournament. But my mindset was all kind of messed up. I was so timid because I was trying to put so much emphasis on playing, I guess, correctly because I had prepared for this tournament for two months that I actually became passive and too slow. Um, so now we play out variation here, and uh, this is, again, just too timid, too slow. I shouldn't be afraid to fight here. It's I should be fine. Like, I'm going to be fine. Um, 
according to AI, wide set by 1.3. But going here, I'm like, okay, let's just make some solid shape, make some solid shape, and then go play somewhere else. And now wide set by like 3.9. So it's just a bad exchange. And I actually went here, which uh, Nick pointed out and the AI also pointed out I shouldn't be doing because these two stones are in the center and no one has a center, right? So if I just make the territory, then I'm up by the territory like here, or maybe here, then I'm up by the territory and then these two stones don't do a lot. Um, I think I could also, I think also an option is like right here or something. Maybe not. Um, either way, I think just defending right here is good enough because as soon as I make the terror, uh, make the framework, then now these two stones can support an invasion or reduction. So I actually made these two stones have value um, is what Nick suggested. And I think the AI also supported that idea. All right, so white goes in, I, Focus on my territory, but you can see very quickly um, that actually creates some um, bad relationship right here. Uh, these two stones just don't work together very well. Uh, so my position is kind of just not good. And here, I should also like try to be aggressive again. I should I should fight. This is much more active. But I, I'm just tunnel visioning on my territory. <laughs> tunnel visioning on my territory. And then we wait here. Uh, white went here, and here I tried to like get more active in the center because I have the territory. This is only a few points. So I decided to just uh, play in the center, and I was also really wanting to fix this right here. So I tunnel visioned a little bit on my bad shape and actually gave white support to handle this. When in actuality, if I had just taken and white fixes, I have easy invasion points here, and I can still go play whatever the next thing is. And this relationship isn't the greatest, but it's not unplayable. So here I actually killed a lot of Aji in this area um, to fix this. And so it's just not worth the value. So I'm actually losing by quite a bit here now. So now I go for the largest framework, which I thought was the top um, for better, for worse. Uh, it's only so, so it's not a terrible move, but probably not ideal. I make this exchange because I'm wanting to get sent to go over here. I think I actually don't even need it. So yeah, it was a, just a little bit of a bad exchange. Now the left is looking pretty big. Um, so here, I go for a squeeze play, and this is also okay. But now I get heavy. I shouldn't connect right here. I should play Sabaki right here because it creates a, a lot easier of a position. I, sh I should play flexible in my opponent's area. I shouldn't play heavy because if I get play heavy, my opponent's going to get to bully me quite a bit. And there's plenty of weakness right here that I don't need heavy. I can actually play something like this, and this is already a lot more flexible. Um, I can do this. Um... See, it looks like everything that I'm suggesting white, uh, the AI doesn't like. Here, 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 here. Oh, just here. I don't know. Um, but I'm too heavy. I'm too heavy in white's framework. And especially since white has another framework. So now if you imagine white surrounding this, this section right here is starting to look very good for white. So... I wasn't very happy about that. I tried to, uh, here I'm trying to use Aji. I'm trying to use um, Aji for defense, which is uh, basically in the classy approach for single to you use Aji to defend yourself. But I'm just too heavy and my shape's too loose and I just can't bring it all together. <laughs> I'm not do applying it properly. Um, my shape looks pretty bad. Uh, I think uh, White played a little bit of a mistake here by letting me have that surround. And now I'm getting into reducing the center and building my own center. Um, but I think the AI suggested that I should just fix. Um, so now I have a more solid center and I can deal with the rest of the game. I'm still losing um, by like uh, 10, maybe a dozen points. Um, but it's a lot more of an easier position to handle. But I kept trying to be more active, um, try to use more Aji to get more of a center. And so my plan here was to start looking at the center to make up the difference. Um, not a bad plan, but definitely definitely too many problems to do it because if I fix anything over here Then these cuts are gonna gonna come back to bite me because this is just too much Aji right there But this also Didn't go super great for me because I gave up too much here to get the center and so now I'm down by even more so building a center Needs to be done in a way where you're gaining value, but if I built it while giving 
value, then I basically canceled out my own center with my own moves, with my own sacrifice. So um, basically this, sec this section right here immediately cancels out that section that I just built. So white doesn't even have to do anything and it's already canceled out. So it's just bad for me. Um, and so the game just kind of goes and we're wrapping it up quite quickly. And I'm just not happy with how the game is going. There's there's no... There's not really a good chance I'm going to win this. I'm trying to play a solid end game. Um, but there's not really a good chance I'm going to win this. So why don't we here and I actually go for very interesting cut that I misread a little bit, but I still ended up pulling something out, which was quite nice. Um, which was uh, killing this over here. So I actually made this trade right here because I thought if I lost this area, then I wouldn't have enough points. But if I trade this area, um, or if I, if I get this area and trade this for this, then I'm also taking white's points, gain points to make up for the points that I lost, and I still got the area. So I actually made a nice little trader here, and I think the AI actually liked this quite a bit. Um, because now the game is within like uh, 8 points instead of down by uh, like 15 to 20. So I think it was a I think it was a cool idea. I actually thought I might have uh, caught up after this, um, but unfortunately, even though the game is close, I think I start playing quite passively, and I actually misread some silly silly stuff. Uh, yeah, so I've tried to play here. Apparently, this is not what I thought it was value wise, but I thought it was pretty big, but I guess not. Um, so I actually missed a lot of key end game points, and I thought getting over here was more valuable than it was. Uh, Yosei is hard. <laughs> um, and then I make a pretty large blunder um, here. Future Classy here. Uh, so this part was actually a little bit messed up in the SGF file, so I made a little bit of a mistake comment in the video and I wanted to correct it because I thought this was kind of a, a key point in the video. So when white plays right here, if I simply connect, white can actually connect out like this. Um, and then my whole group is not even alive and I'm in a lot of trouble. On the flip side, if I go right here, white actually can go right here. And this is where the mistake was in the SGF recording. It, it was played like this, and then I made the comment that I can't connect, but that was me like remembering the position of my head, but not seeing what I was looking at. Uh, but the actual thing is here, and I can't connect because of this move. And this is a very famous Tsuji, one that I absolutely should know, and do know, but sometimes you have to lose to it to make it stick sometimes. Um, and so in the game, I actually played like this and let white out a bit, I believe. Uh, let me see. Okay, so it was actually, yeah, so it was similar, um, just out of order. I think the response that I need is actually here. This way, I can at least take, uh, no, I can't even take Sente here. It's just not good. Yeah, I guess it, it, I guess it doesn't matter no matter what I do. It's going to be the exact same shape. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share that this was the result of the position, but the order was recorded wrong in the game. Uh, so apologies there, but just wanted to explain this to Suji. Um, yeah, definitely a painful result. Yeah, just so many points. <laughs> so many points. And so I kind of feel like I've just been defeated after this. Um, I think the last thing is uh, there's a Ko on top at some point. No, okay, so I was reading the Ko on top and then eventually I fixed it, but white also got this which was a big key move because it's a lot of territory at this stage and the result was not very nice uh the result ended up being nick up by 20 so i lost a lot of points um these were aga rules so some of the value comes from the dame and the passing of stones and everything else but yeah the difference was 20 points so i was kind of bummed um i wasn't bummed about losing to nick nick is a pretty strong player 
Um, I was really bummed about missing this uh, bottom side right here because that is something I would I, I should know at my level. It's uh, pretty simple. And then also reviewing, I noticed that uh, I'm missing a lot of simple things. I'm playing very passive. I'm playing very abnormally. I worked really hard to prepare for Congress, so not being able to perform was becoming increasingly frustrating. And then also the fact that my rank had got down to Tudon. When I had gone into this tournament thinking this will be my first tournament as 5 Don, I hope it do well, prepared really hard for it. And now I'm down at 2 Don and I'm underperforming and it was just all kinds of bad mental stress that I should not have put on myself. And so my game was reflecting my mental state, I think, quite a bit. And even even losing, I was losing by like large margins. I wasn't even playing games that I wouldn't mind losing. I was playing games that were just really awful. I think to th this one was Tuesday. So I think the day off was after this one. And I tried to reset my mental state and try to get my mind off go on the day off. And I thought I did well, but we shall see how it goes in the next game video.